Okay. We should be back. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you start saying, oh, look how cool, look how cool, right? Yeah, there's sometimes you get those little things that, like I said, the system's new and there's little bugs we got to work out. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Okay, so the other piece of paper that we did, this was on Saturday. I showed you that. I showed you what we were going to do, but I wanted to show you some other things you can do with big old pieces of paper like that. And here are some ideas. Okay. So some of the things you can do with this is you can take those big pieces of paper and you can cover journals with it. Um, <laughs> you have to do thumbs up all over again, telling you what. <laughs> anyway, these are journals that I buy. I love these lined journals because I like to write in them, take notes, um, draw in them. These are some of my favorite kinds the moleskin or the piccadilly are great and i just i thoroughly enjoy these these kinds of journals they're great to put wrap um do your artwork and then glue the, your artwork whatever it is to the cover okay so this happens to be a jelly print and um and some extra stuff that I put tape on and just added to it. But I love having my journals have their own covers on them. And so I do that. I also make cards with them. I also send out some happy mail type things from time to time to different people. I'll send out happy mail things. And um, that... I love doing that as well. I don't get to do that very often, but I do it once in a while. And so I like having my own stuff to include in that as well. So those are some of the things that I do with those big pieces of paper, just to give you some ideas. Another thing I want to tell you, uh, remind you guys, those of you that are VIP members of howtogetcreative.com, your class is tomorrow. You'll get an e check your email later today for that information. Okay. Now, what else? I went to California. I was in California for about a week, and then um, I was visiting my son, and then he flew back with me, and that's when we did all this stuff here. And um, when I was in California, I got to do some really cool stuff. I thought I would show you a little bit about that. First of all, I don't know if you've noticed the necklace that I have on that looks like a mandala. That's because it, it is. That's because it is. Whoops, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. This was the box. My son gave this to me as a late birthday gift. And he got this when he was in, I think he said in Seattle. So this was where it came from, Ventures Marketplace. And um, that's, I believe, where he was. He was there on business. And so he gave me this pair of earrings and the necklace because he knows how much I love mandalas. And this is the artist. I believe the artist said that she took a photograph and she used that kaleidoscope, um, uh, the kaleidoscope software program to turn it into a mandala. So anyway, it's, you know, you got to admit who, who couldn't. Well, I don't know. I love that. It's a beautiful piece. Anyway, I really appreciated that. Um, some other things we did. If you are in the L.A. area, there are two of these there. If you are into this sort of... Um, whoops. Wrong camera. Sorry, guys. Um, if you're into where you like the process or the experience of meditation... This is a meditation. It's actually a business, and it's called Unplug. 
And so I just thought I would show this to you. I really enjoyed going there. We went there a number of times and it was great. They also have an app that you can put on your phone, which I did. If you don't live where you can go to unplug, you can have the app. If you're not into meditation, it's going to be meaningless to you. For me, it was really good because it helps me decompress and unwind and all that. So anyway, unplug is the name of that. And there's this absolutely stunning, beautiful fountain water feature outside this business. And it looks like a, I think of it as kind of like DNA. It's a twisted kind of stone or I think it's stone structure and the water trickles down. I'm telling you, I could have sat there forever and just listened to that water. There's something about water, whether it's a fountain, a um, uh, the ocean. Oh, don't get me started on the ocean. <laughs> Those of you that live near the ocean, you are, I am jealous. Let me just say that. I am jealous. Anyway, that fountain is just so calming and relaxing and wonderful. Anyway. Um, thank you. I loved it too. And one day we went, we took a trip to Santa Barbara and in Santa Barbara, we looked at a, at many things, but one of the things we looked at was a site for an art experience retreat. And we are planning to, or headed into the planning stages of that for the fall of 2019. Very tentative plans, but that's where we're thinking we're going to do that because I would really like to have it as an experience and be close to the ocean, you know, a very, a, a, an art experience is more than just the art. It's about um, being inspired. And I don't know what else is more inspiring other than the mountains possibly, but that is a little hard to get to. So anyway, your grandma lives next door to the ocean. That is wonderful. Good for you. That's great. Um, so one of the things that we got to do, I got to go to an art store. There's a big, beautiful art store with that's stocked with all kinds of things. I mean, if you like Daniel Smith watercolor, it's got, I think, probably every Daniel Smith watercolor in the and mediums and all the stuff with watercolor. I'm not a watercolor person. Yeah, Ocean Sound Machine. I understand that. Um, if you like golden fluid acrylics or golden paints of any kind, I'm telling you, they have, they have, they had all the art mediums like up to gallon size. I was like overwhelmed. I had never seen that much golden product because I don't have access to anything like that in a store. Anyway, we spent a while there. Nikki, my son's girlfriend who has a YouTube channel called Nikki Beauty Bliss. And she has another one, I think called more Nikki Beauty Bliss. <laughs> the the more one she does her uh, video blog blogs and <clears throat> she is putting up their trip they went to australia and so she's doing things like that on that channel her other channel is all about beauty and lifestyle and stuff and she walked in and she looked around she's not into art stuff she appreciates what i do but she's not into art stuff and she said ah i get it this is your sephora <laughs> yeah yeah this is my Sephora. So if you're into beauty products, you'll understand that reference. Anyway, so we did that. We spent time at the ocean. It was really great. I won't bore you with details. But on the way back, we met up with Dawn, who is in the chat. Let's make a mess today. Dawn. And she gave me some really cool things. So I just wanted to share those with you. So this is a card that she made. And she wrote me just a sweet, sweet note. And she gave me several things that I've already put in my journal. But these are the... Um, and she had all this all wrapped up. She had this beautiful trim yarn, which, of course, I'm not going to throw away. I'm going to save this because that's, that's going to live someplace. It's like a fringy yarn. She did a, um, a tag for me which she knows how much the butterfly, the symbol of the butterfly means to me. And so she did this tag. It's really beautiful. Give you a little better shot of it. It was so much fun. We met at a Starbucks and this, this what's interesting is this is a, um, 
the cover off of a piano book that I'm pretty sure I have because <laughs> I was I was a piano major in college and so I had lots of Shermer things as I was growing up so that was fun to see that on the back and then she did a couple of ATCs that she shared with me I'm not going to take them out of the package I'm just going to leave them here but Halloween ATCs but aren't those cute and the washi tape everything she had everything so nicely packaged and it was fun and then there were some other butterfly things but I've already stuck those in my journal so yeah so that was really fun it's really nice to be able to meet um, to meet people sometimes I've had a few people that have actually come through I'm because I'm on a major highway going through the state of Missouri sometimes as people are traveling it's you know it works out where we can meet so, well, we met at a Starbucks, and um, we closed down the whole Starbucks, and that was kind of, that was really funny. First of all, they made us move because they were getting a delivery, so we cooperated, and we moved to a different table, and then a few minutes later, they came over, and they were, I guess they thought we were going to leave at that point, and we didn't because we had things to say, <laughs> things to do, you know what I mean? And um, they wanted us to to um, move tables so we did and then a little bit later they came over and they were less than than uh, I would say polite when they said we're closed <laughs> so, got it <laughs> got it I got a, a new stencil while I was at art essentials you'll know why when you see it I had not seen this one this is one of Rebecca Meyer designs I, I've seen it but I've not actually been able to hold it in my hand um, so I bought this and I've used it in my journal already but I love anything mandala of course um, I don't know what is it with Starbucks that's right how rude right we went to a place called paper source and those I'm sure many of you have access to a paper source um, business I don't and so we went and they're they're all over the place they just don't happen to be where I live and this was the bag that what I bought came in and I just thought that was the coolest bag please recycle this bag no worries I'm gonna cut it apart and use it in projects but isn't that cool I love the color combination and I'm not exactly sure what this is but um, we'll call it we'll call it good art material <laughs> so anyway I saved the bag of course and because I don't have enough journals in my life, I had to buy this set of journals. You know, because I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough journals in my life. I just don't. What can I say? So this was a set of three. And this is from their, I guess, their fall collection or something. But I fill up journals pretty quickly anymore. And... Um, so I had to add these to my stash. And these, I will not cover the, the covers. I will leave these alone because look how, look how cool they are. Aren't those the cutest illustrations? And they're lined. So these come from the paper source. I mean, it's not, it's not fancy paper or anything. Honestly, I bought them for the covers. And I bought them for the size. I love this particular size journal. And here's the other one. And they're all lined paper. And they'll only be nice like this for about, you know, as long as they're in the plastic. <laughs> yeah, hedgehogs, I know. Aren't they cute? They're from Paper Source. So I don't know if they have a, a site online or not. But anyway, Paper Source, that's where those came from. And I think I bought something else, but I don't remember what. The last day I was there, we went to the Getty. The Getty is this humongous, and I do mean humongous, museum. And they don't charge you to go into the museum, but they do charge you handsomely for park for the privilege of parking there. <laughs> so there's more than one way to get your money, right? So here are, um, I bought some postcards. My son said he, he and I were the only ones that went and because uh, Nikki had to work that day and uh, he said now you need to buy postcards and send yourself some postcards so I bought the postcards but I didn't send them 
Shoot, you cannot find the inspiration card deck on how Shoot, just click on the description box below the video. You're going to find a link right under there. Otherwise, go to... Okay, let me let me explain this. Otherwise, go to howtogetcreative.com and click on the tab at the top that says shop and you'll and it'll take you right to the shop. It's the first product in the shop. So that's how you get there. I promise it's not hard. <laughs> I promise it's not hard. If you have any issues, um, leave me a message in the with this video. Leave a comment and I will get back to you, okay? Because if you want cards, I want you to have them. Okay, so this is the Getty. And like I said, I bought postcards, but I didn't mail them to myself. I just brought them home. So I'm going to put them in my journal or something. But look how beautiful this is. I mean, they have all these fountains and all of these amazing... I mean, it is one of those places that you could just go, if you don't mind paying 15 bucks for parking, you can just go park your vehicle, take a, you have to get on a tram and go up the mountain to get to it. But once you're up there, you know, there's places to sit, you could sketch, you could write, uh, you don't even have to go in a building and you can be inspired. Lots of water features and just in the displays and everything. I mean, it's, it's breathtaking. It really is breathtaking. So those were just some postcards I bought. Um, we got, you know, just the, the typical touristy kinds of pick up the brochures to take a look at um, lots of sculpture, lots of um, just lots of details. I know I'm really zoomed in, but you know, I just wanted to give you a, a little flavor of the Getty. They also have a lot of things for families there. And so in one of the gift shops, gift shop areas they have this little brochure and so it's encouraging families and children to get interested and they have it in all different in, um, languages that was another thing that was really cool but they do all these things to get children interested in the getty so hunt solve turn so there's cards over here and you know, just getting kids to look for different things and get them to go around to the various galleries. I mean, I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't last so long at the Getty because I got on such overload. I don't know. Does that ever happen to you guys that you get on, on visual overload to the point? It's like we had to leave because I was like, I cannot see anything else. I just truly can't see anything else. It's too much. Um, and so, you know, we were there for a while, but you know, I don't, I think we were there like three hours or something when I was like, I cannot see anymore. I, the, uh, my brain was just like, it was like so filled up and my eyes couldn't take anymore. My brain couldn't take anymore. So we left. So, so I'm going to go back to the Getty someday. Anyway, my favorite thing that I got to see there, I'm going to show you right here is this, um, exhibit they had right here and it was called artists and their books books and their artists and this is just an example of one okay now how many of you guys can do a book just like that every one of you can do a book just like that it's like a junk journal um it it was it, but that was one of the the milder not milder milder is the wrong word um it, there were lots of books there that that were un, very non-traditional books. This was one that you look at and you go, "Oh, yeah, that's a book. I see how that was done." I could I spent most of my time in the beginning looking at that and taking pictures of the various parts of the exhibit. It was really really neat. So, anyway, just loads and loads and loads of exhibits and all the kinds of things that they tell you about. I mean, it is an amazing, it, it truly is an amazing place to go. And so I, I, I went on overload really quick. Overstimulation. Oh yeah, Julie, absolutely. Hi Josie. Um, but it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I mean, I came back going, 
I mean, the end of that day, of course, it was the last day that I was out there. But the end of that day, I was just like, I was just like pie eyed, if you know what I mean. I was just like, I think I'm sure my pupils were widely dilated, you know, like what? I, what have I just seen now to make this more carry a bigger impact for me is when the fires were coming through that area, the Getty is up on a like up on a. I would call it on a mountain. I don't know. Some people might call it a hillside, but it's up high. At the base of that, there is a, a wide highway and then another hillside mountain slash mountain on the other side. Well, the fire was on the other side of the highway and it burned over. I don't know how many acres it burned, but it came over that hillside, burned it all clear down to the highway. And the only thing what saved the Getty was that that fire did not jump the highway. If it had ever made the jump, a spark or whatever, had made the jump across the highway, it would have gone right up like, you know, like tinder and would have taken the Getty. So I am so grateful that didn't happen for, for, for me and for everyone and for everyone in the future. So anyway, that's that. Okay. Um, so I've told you the highlights of my trip. It was wonderful. Got to spend a lot of time with my son, quality time. I had not been there, um, for, I had not been in California for, um, about 13 years. That's how long it had been. Um, how or where do you sign up for the newspaper? You go to howtogetcreative.com and you should see a tab at the top. Hold on a minute and I'll tell you exactly. Give me one second here. Okay. If you go to howtogetcreative.com and then you will see up in the menu bar at the top, it says news. You want to click that and then you can fill in your um, email address. There's no charge. It comes to you every day in your news, in your inbox. Okay. Yeah, it was a long time. It was a long time for sure. Okay, so that's California. It was great. I'm I appreciate it, and uh, I got some downtime, and that was wonderful. I also got very overstimulated. <laughs> Blow your hair back, stimulated. We went to the ocean numerous times. When you live in the middle of the United States and you don't get to see the ocean, it just it, it the the magnitude of the ocean is for me is. Um, well, we won't go there because I'll just start bawling like a baby, you know, because that's because that's what I do. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is since we're talking about how to get creative, I'm going to give you just the briefest overview. We are going to do something today as well, but I just have so much to tell you. I'm telling you. Let me show you a couple things. The reason I'm showing you this stuff is because I had a question this week uh, from someone who said, is how to get creative still happening? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's where I spend most of my time. It's doing things for the member area, which I love. I love this too. I love everything I do. Um, so the latest class i'm just going to show you some samples i'm going to overstimulate you some of the latest samples from um the most recent class that i've done i'm going to show you just a little bit of okay so this is a class where it is uh this is painted fabric and different kinds of treatments to create this and I'm zoomed in pretty close so that you can really see so this fabric is painted with a certain a special kind of fabric paint called Dynaflow and then it's various kinds of treatments done on the fabric but if you if you enjoy creating your own kinds of materials whether it is fabric or paper um, this is a great, a great, if I do say so myself, it's a great class. I've lost my Zoom <laughs> to back out a little bit. I can see this is going to be a challenge having to keep up with remote controls. But anyway, 
So just to give you some ideas of some of the things that we covered in this class, big old fat cats, how to paint big old fat cats, and skinny cats, and fun cats, and zebras, how to paint zebras, and this is all using the same fab or the same paint. But look at the beautiful things that you get. So this was all covered in one class. It was a very long class, and um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that we do. So some classes that how to get creative are technique based. Some are based, you know, in a project format. Some of them are um, paper, some are fabric, some are needle felting, um, printing, mono printing, and so forth. Here is an example of paper. This is paper. Everything else I showed you up to now was fabric. So this is paper. This is paper. This is a different kind of paper. Look at this. Look how cool this is. Is that cool? And this one was just leftover stuff. But that is paper and fabric. And this is also paper. Okay, so this is also paper. This is another material called Lutridor. So, same kinds of things done on Lutridor. And if you like making your own kinds of things or learning about new, um, something that might be new to you, then you might want to check that out. And then you can also, in the class, I show you how to take a printed fabric like this and paint it like these. And then you can cut them out and make, these are for the next class, but you can make things with those, um, that painted fabric. But that way you can get the color, the exact color you want to have. So that is an example of the most recent class. that is there now. And also, I have there an art journal series that's going on. This is just an ongoing kind of art journal series. And this is, I'm doing this in this old, old, old 1939 ledger. And so I'm gonna give you a peek through this. So this book is, is incredibly old and crumbly paper. It's not meant and I've showed some of these in the past. It's not meant to be an art journal at all, which is part of the, uh, the fun for me to see if I can make it into an art journal. So some of these are experiments. Some of them are failed experiments. They worked in the moment, and then they didn't work afterwards because it wasn't a good choice. I still love the pages, but, you know, it is what it is. You learn, and you, and you keep going. So this is an ongoing series. At, uh, and what you get to do with this is you just get to peek over my shoulder. I do these late at night so, and record them, and so you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. Sometimes there's storytelling involved. <laughs> and as in most of my journals, my art journaling, I always include writing. Um, now it's a, Actually, it's a membership, Tara. Yeah, so it's actually a membership. But I'm just giving you a flavor of what it's about. Now this is these are the last this is the last page thing spread that I did. And when I did it, I didn't like it. I ended up liking it in the end, but it's still not my favorite thing in the entire world. But you know, it's okay. So sometimes when you do things, you know, they end up not being your favorite, your very favorite thing to do. I love this one. I love this cat. He's he's my my friend, I've painted him many times, and this page is not done, but because I've not been inspired to finish it, so he'll be he'll be done someday. So anyway, just to give you a, a bit of a flavor of what how to get creative is, that's a it's like a sneak peek into how to get creative. So yeah, no bad art pages. Some are better than others. Isn't that the truth? Well, that was one that fit the category of there's others, there's some that are better than that. <laughs>
I still got out of it what I needed, you know? Okay, Halloween is this month. Um, whether you celebrate Halloween or not, maybe you celebrate fall. So I have a couple things to show you for that. Okay. We did these on stream uh, probably two years ago, but I thought I would show them to you again because these pumpkins, you can buy these pumpkins. These came from a craft store. And um, so you can find these. They're the, I don't know what they're made out of, some kind of foam or whatever. Um, but they have improved these a lot over the years. And so this was, the, it was originally this creamy color, which I was attracted to because it was different. So maybe it's more of a gourd than it is a pumpkin. But anyway, I bought it at a craft store and they were, when I bought them, they were half price. And so it was a good, it was a good deal. So anyway, I did these on stream. Like I said, a couple years ago, you might be able to, I don't know. I think it was on YouTube, but I'm not positive. Any hoot. Um, I just thought I'd show them to you. They're done with Sharpies. And so each section of the pumpkin, I did a different pattern in and then did some shading and so forth on it. So there was that one done just in black. This is the same exact pumpkin done with um, purple and green. And then I antiqued it with uh, burnt umber, I guess. I think that's what it was. Anyway, just so something different, you know. These look pretty interesting put together you know, on a table with some other things. They also have those pumpkins, although those are the, the cream colored ones, they also have them in orange and they have them in different shapes and different sizes. So, but a lot of times right now, this time of year, you can find these half price. So, yeah. I did it last year. I don't think, I don't think it was last year, was it? Maybe it was. Seems like it was longer ago than that. <laughs> I couldn't tell you for sure. Maybe it was. You guys probably know better than I do. Uh, these, I just bought these from the store where I go to um, book club. It's a mixed media store. Mixed media and scrapbooking. But I particularly wanted to show you this one because it's pumpkins. These are from Tattered Angels. And I really like this um, this paper. So I thought I would show them to you, show you how they come. And, you know, if you're interested in them, I'm sure you can order them or find them someplace. But it is, these are six by six, I think. Yeah, these are six inches square. And they are mixed media you see it says mixed media so the paper will stand up to it's not your average paper it will stand up it's not exactly watercolor but it stands up to wet media pretty well so in this particular package you got these four images I just thought I would show them to you now do you have to use wet stuff no you could use colored pencil or whatever um, hey Shelly so there are those. I'll show you um, some of this paper that I've painted and used for things. It comes, it originally came out in 12 by 12 sheets that I saw. And then she got these in and I thought, well, these are pretty cool. And I may do an impromptu thing and paint these or something, I don't know. These are really interesting, okay? These guys are really interesting because look at the not that you couldn't paint them your you know do these yourself but it's so fun to start with something that's already grayscale and then all you have to do is add color to it i think they'd make great um you could put them on square card bases 
You could also put them, put them on the cover of a journal, which I think would be really great. I know the pumpkins are wonderful, aren't they? And then this was the other one. She had others, but these were the only ones that I got. And they ran about $4. They were $4 for each package, which is not bad. And this size is... This is more of a botanical. This is 4 by four by 6 so it's the size of a postcard. They aren't postcards, but they are the size of a postcard. So just so you can see the images. So there's those three. And then these, these three. So you get six different images and um, so there they are. So all of these are the same paper, that mixed media paper. But the backgrounds are different and they're just really fun to paint. I know, I know. So I thought I'd show you those in case you hadn't seen those. And I'll show you an example of how I use that paper here in just a minute. And then I bought this. Uh, I don't normally buy many packages of um, paper like this. You know, the um, scrap, but already done scrapbook paper. But this one really caught my attention. It's a Tim Holtz ideology. And this is all vellum. So it is many, many sheets of vellum. 12 by 12 vellums. And they're all done in this kind of collage style, but it's vellum. And the Dela is the owner of the store, and she had these. She'd use these in an altered book. So just to give you a a look through. But that really spoke to me. I'm not. I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with it but beautiful beautiful if you like vellum this is this is really lovely stuff it is um okay it says it has 12 by 12 designs six by six designs three by three designs and three by four designs so it has i didn't even realize it had the other the other ones so those are the little the little ones I know I'm showing it to you um, sideways, but it won't. There's the three by threes. I can't flip them if I do it the other way. And there's the six by sixes. But they're all vellum sheets. But aren't those pretty? I'm telling you. Yeah. So pretty. Okay, so that's that. All right, so I have a question for you. I will, I will show you this if you want to see it. And if you don't, we'll move on. Um... Um, oh, shoot, that could be, that could be the situation. Um, shoot, leave me a, leave me a comment. Let's see, how do I want you to do this? Um, leave a comment with this video. You're going to unfortunately have to come back after the video is, is up as a recording. Come back and leave me a comment. That you're having trouble seeing it and then we will contact you it probably does have to do with the fact you're in a different country yeah didn't think about that and i'll get i'll get um we'll get together okay we'll get it we'll get it figured out that's i'm sure that's the problem i'm sure that's the issue because <clears throat> sometimes we have to do a little um thing in the background to yeah anyway Back to, <laughs> thanks you. So back to the question I have for you. This is my bag that I take with me when I go and do writing and art journaling, mostly writing. And it occurred to me that maybe some of you would want to see what was what I carry around with me. Uh, if you're interested in what's inside this bag, let me know, and I'll go through its contents quickly. And um, yeah. So if you're interested, stick it in the chat so I know that you are interested in seeing what's in here. 
until I see whether people are interested in doing this or not, I am going to show you how I use that mixed media paper. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That mixed media paper, like I showed you with the pumpkins, this is an example of where I used it. Okay. So this journal right here, this is um, the chapters journal from Moleskin. I bought these on sale at, they were selling them out at my local bookstore. And I bought a bunch of them. I wish I'd bought every one they have because I love this style of journal. You do want to see it? Okay. All right. So this, um, I don't like those plain covers. I think those plain covers are just butt ugly to tell you the truth. Now, other people might think they're great, and that's fine, and, you know, don't take offense to what I just said. Um, but, yeah, I don't like them. And so I always want my, my covers of my journals to have my own personal touch on them. And besides that, I can, if I have the various journals covered, I know what's inside the journal because I, that, that sticks with me as to what's in the journal. So this is a piece of that mixed media paper, like the pumpkins and stuff I just showed you, but it was 12 by 12. And so this has been painted. So this gives you an idea of what that this grayscale uh, type of patterning looks like after it's been painted. And I have, um, I can't even tell you right now what I painted it with. Whatever it was I painted it with, I did a, a video on the website for it. You can paint it with whatever you want. Um, I, I don't remember what I did. Anyway, so I cut those pieces of paper down and then I glued them onto the cover of these. And what's nice about this particular journal is that it opens flat. Okay? It opens flat. No matter what page you're on, it opens flat. It's a stitched journal. And this, I just love this little style of journal now you could write it it's a i think it's a traveler's notebook style uh, size but i don't know for sure i don't i don't care because i just like it the way it is anyway i did not bind didn't put anything across the binding i just put that mixed media paper on the front and the back and i'm telling you it just that mixed media paper has such a good feel to it so i love that okay so inside my journaling bag that i take with me when i go to write and to plan and so forth because I take myself to a coffee shop that's my treat and I sit there and I do my kind of um, I don't know that you call it a ritual but it's my my you know process we'll call it that so I'll take my journal so this is a journal that I just completed writing in and my journals are a combination of art little bits of art, little bits of things that I want to keep track of, uh, a lot of processing, a little bit of stamping, a lot of processing, a lot of downloading, planning, um, getting rid of the garbage in my head so that I can think. You know, you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> None of you have garbage in your head. It's a place where I stick in things, you know, little cards. It's not exactly what I call an art journal, um, but I do put little bits and pieces of my art in it. Um, here is a crazy shot of Charlie laying on his back, and so he had to make the art journal. Um, there's Charlie, and there's Chance peeking around the back, and so forth. So I, you know, often include mandalas, mandalas. And so forth so anyway that is a journal that I just finished it's done and I don't know um, I tend to carry my journals around with me for a while it's like my friend and so I'll carry it around so a journal that I've just filled up will stay with me for a few weeks until I finally feel like I can let go of it <laughs> you know we all have our things right so this is the new one that I'm working in. And so same style of journal. I'm telling you, I love this style of journal. 
Sometimes when you, uh, one of the reasons I won't give you too many close-ups about my journal is because of the amount of writing I do and sometimes if I've had an upsetting week. Now like this, I drew when I was on the airplane flying. That was part of, you know, distracting myself. This is one of the butterflies that Dawn gave me. This is that journal that I, or that uh, mandal I showed you, that mandala stencil. Um, part of what I do is to get rid of, and not everybody needs to do this, but if you have, if I have a particularly upsetting experience or particularly upsetting week, which I had earlier this week, and I start coming apart at the seams, I download all that stuff in my journal. You would not, you would not want to read this journal based on what I wrote this week, because you would think, A, she's lost her mind, and B, I thought she was a lady, and she's not sounding like a lady by the way she's writing. <laughs> so, you know, stay out of my journals. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I carry other journals with me. I have an assortment of journals. So I'm going to show those to you, okay? I have an assortment of journals in this bag because I write, I have different journals for different purposes. So this is another one of them. You've seen this just a moment ago. You saw this journal. This is also a moleskin. I really, I'm becoming a moleskin snob. Um, I love the paper, the moleskin paper. I like the lined journals. I also have some of the unlined journals. Um, and I love these. This is, um, this is a book that I'm writing letters to my mother. My mother's been gone for years and years. But there was something about writing letters to her um, because so many things have happened in life in general as well as in my life that it just seemed appropriate. So I have a book dedicated just to her. So I do that occasionally, not all the time. Now see how ugly and plain this thing is? See how ugly and plain this is? You know, it is ugly and plain. And so at the very least, let me show you one. If I can put my hand on it, where is that journal? Hold on one second. All right, I will be right back. Hold on. I had to go in where the sponsors were. That's always dicey. <laughs> um, hey, Shannon. Good to see you. Um, at the very least, I will decorate the cover. This is the same journal. I'll decorate it somehow. And so, yeah, that's what I did on this. So I drew on this. And I, there's a whole YouTube video about this particular thing. And... Uh, but this one, desperate. I don't know what's in here, and I don't know what's the front, you know. And so it needs, and most of the time I get it this way, and it's like, no, it's the wrong way up. So if they're covered either in paper or fabric, I'm much happier. So this is going to have to be done. So this is letters to another person. And then I introduced my granddaughter to um, moleskins, and we talked about it when she was here last. And so she went to the bookstore and she bought herself some of these and she bought me some. And so it's a smaller size. And so I carry this one and she is in her 20s. And so I'm writing a book of letters to her. So I do a lot of things like that, you know. Um, this is a new book that I'm working on. Uh, just a regular, I, I wrote, uh, Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore. And that's on Amazon and this is the working title of the next part of the book and so this is my book where I've been just you know downloading ideas and and writing about that so that's what that is and then some you know sometimes I'll just sometimes I'll start in the back of the book 
and work backwards, which is what's happening here, because it was the thing I could get my hands on yet at the time. So I have multiple books that I write in. Sometimes, not all the time, just sometimes. What else in my bag? I have um, stencils. This is this is uh, these are some of the Faber Castell stencils that are the um, paper stencils. It's like a heavyweight cardstock type stencil. And so I'll draw through these. Sometimes I'll do some. These are all ones I've just drawn through. But they're really, you get a ton of stencils. They are paper, so you have to be a little careful with them. But I enjoy having those. And sometimes if I get uh, take a notion, I'll take a stencil like this. And I'll spend some time and, and do some spray ink through them to decorate the journal a little bit. So those are in there. I have a book that I've been reading, Science of Success, so I hang on to that. I have a deck of my cards in there, and this is the way that I use these cards when I'm out writing. I take my cards, and these are cards that I've created. Um, this summer we released them. So I shuffle them. I'm not doing a good job of shuffling, but anyway, I shuffle them like this. And then I close my eyes and I just fan them out. So imagine my eyes are closed and then I pull one and then I will use that and start my journaling with the word and the quote on the other side. Now, even though I created these, I still use them. Um, I wrote every word on them, but I still use them and let them guide my inspiration many, many days. And sometimes I use the art prompt on it on the the um, journal pages too. Let's see if I can show you an example of that. Um, okay, so for example, these little guys here, there was some, it was whatever the prompt was on the card, that inspired these and so I drew those in the journal. So. Hi, Cigna. Um, so I have my a deck of my cards in there. And then I have a couple of bags of stuff, you know, little stuff. So I have an ink pad. I have a little inky, you know, sponge. A couple of plastic Tim Holtz stencils. Sometimes I'll change out the ink pads and, and have, you know, other colors of ink. And then I have another bag. And this is all depending on, you know, it strictly... It's like, okay, what do I feel like? So I want choices. You know what I mean? I want choices. I don't want to be stuck with the same thing. You guys like that? <laughs> Anybody else here that that has to have choices? Well, I certainly do. So I have a glue stick because I'm forever sticking some little bit of something in this journal. Okay? Some little something that I'll stick in there. This was where I drew a mandala on the, the page and then I wrote over the top of it. It doesn't matter if I can read it. I don't care. It's the art, it's the act of creation. A decent little pair of scissors because I'm always wanting to cut something out. Um, I have different kinds of pens, a couple of highlighters. This is my favorite pen of all time. I don't know if you guys are into pens or not, but this is my favorite pen right here. I've tried lots of different pens, but I like to write with this one, and it is the G2, the Pilot G2, um, and it's the Fine Point 0 0.7. And so I just bought this the other day. It has all these colors in it. And I picked out the ones that I, some of them are metallic, and I picked out the ones I really liked, and I stuck those in my bag. I don't want to write in ink the same color all the time, so I have different colors of ink. I have, I always carry a few little bits of ephemera type stuff, so these are some butterflies that people have sent to me, created and sent to me. Ruth sent me those. Dawn, or uh, Jan in Canada, Lady True North, 
gave me those. And so I always have something in my bag that's, you know, ephemera type stuff. Or, or I will take a sleeve from the coffee cup. I have not been known to do this many times and peel it apart and use bits and pieces of the, the, um, uh, coffee sleeve. And then one of the things, this is probably my most valuable tool when I'm gone, when I'm someplace else and I'm writing, and that's an extra set of earbuds that always stay in my bag. And you know why I do that? Anybody know why I have earbuds in my, in my bag? And I don't know where this little bag came from, but it's the perfect thing for earbuds. And they always stay in this. Anybody know why I do that? I know that I just love those Pilot G2s. I'm not kidding. Oh, while, while you think about why I do that, I'm going to load my bag back up. Anybody know? Nope, I don't use them for YouTube, but that was a good guess. What do you think? <laughs> Earbuds are a must-have. That's right. You got it. Is it, is it Sarah? She got it because of the noise in places. Um, I don't know what it is about people who go into a coffee shop and they have to have a phone conversation. <laughs> and they don't have a quiet one. They'll have a loud phone conversation. Or, and, and I'm not the boss of the world, so I can't say anything. I just have to deal with it on my end, right? Because I'm not the boss of the world. Sometimes I think I am, but I'm not. And or they'll have a business meeting. People will go there to have a business meeting and none of these people are quiet. None of them are quiet. So I have my music in there. I have um, several classical things because that can drown it out the fastest for me. So I'll crank up that music, put in my earbuds and I don't hear anything. So anyway, so that is what I carry around with me in my bag. <laughs> Yeah, I know, Shannon. I know. I know. Uh, you, but put in your earbuds. Even if nothing is on, people leave you alone. You know. Oh, she's busy. She's very busy. I even had somebody come in the coffee shop where I was one day that knew me very well. And she said, you looked really serious, so I didn't bother you. <laughs> I get it, Shannon. Okay, enough of all that. We have rattled on and rattled on all this time. But I'm telling you, I just had so much stuff to tell you. So let's do some art. Let's do some art, shall we? Let's get let's get creative today. Yeah, Joni says she wished she could do that where she worked. Yeah. People are loud. Whew. Here, here's the thing. I have a cell phone too. And sometimes I get a phone call. But when I get a phone call, I either get off the phone, if I'm in a public place, I get off the phone. You say, I'm not where I can talk to you. I'll call you back later. Or... Here's the other thing. I get up and go somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know why anybody should hear me talk. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. So here we go. This is what we're going to do. We're going to mess around with here. This is about artist trading coins. I honestly didn't know that Artist Trading Coins had a beginning. Uh, I really didn't know that. Uh, this was in the latest issue of Somerset Studio. I think it's the latest one. Yeah, September, October. And there's a whole article in here, um, Artist Trading Coins by Joanne Hodges, a.k.a. Crafty Hodges. So, in reading this article... Apparently, she is the one who came up with the idea, which 
it, it just never occurred to me where it came from. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Sharon. Um, so here are the coins, the concept of the coins. This was really interesting to read. And um, she's here on YouTube as Crafty Hodges. So check her out because you'll see her videos. Her videos are good. She's She is very um, creative. I really enjoy watching her. So shout out to Joanne Hodges for coming up with artist trading coins. All right, so the size that I did was two and a half inches in diameter. I think you can do whatever you want, but you know, I did two and a half inches in diameter. Oh, and one of the other things I always have with me in my bag, it wasn't in there right now, is I have a set of the Mandela Madness cards that I have torn up. I've split them all apart to use for art supplies and to use the words and the quotes and so forth off of them. So that's another thing that's always in my, my bag. I didn't have them in there right now because I was pulling them out to use here today. Okay, so this is what I did. Now, Joanne explains in that article how she, you know, came up with them to start with and what she did, you know, what kinds of uh, the process that she uses. And she uses cardstock and puts like three layers together to create her coins. So they're going to be a lot more substantial than what I have here, but these are fine for me. So what I used was, because here, here's the honest truth. I started messing around with this before I ever read the article. <laughs> so so I, did, I didn't know what, you know, wh what the concept was from the beginning. I just started, you know, messing around with it. I didn't, I heard of artist trading coins. I'd seen people doing things with them, but I didn't really know what what the the original concept was. So that's what you're seeing here is where I started playing. Okay. So this is just 90 pound inexpensive paper. This happens to come from a local craft store, Michaels. Um Barbara said she made a bunch of art coins out of her mandalas from Mandala Madness last year. How cool is that? That's really cool. Galena says, I've done art on small circles about five years ago when she first got into mixed media. Yeah, I think that circles are just such a cool... Um, and Travis, did you do some too? I didn't see your... Um, I didn't see your comment, but probably you did. I mean, let, there, you know, the truth is nothing is new under the sun. You know, uh, when you have creative sparks flying around in the air, <laughs> we all, we all, whether we know it or not, we're all, you know, sparking off of each other. So anyway, this is what I started with 90 pound watercolor paper, because it's what my hand got a hold of to begin with. 140 pound would be fine too, I'm sure. And because I didn't have a two and a half inch circle cutter, and that was the size I was working with, I mean, I didn't have a, um, a punch. I No, I don't have a punch. I don't have a die that size, but I do have this thing. And this is the Fiskars circle cutter. Okay, there is a little bit of a learning curve with this thing, but it works, it works. And it wasn't expensive. And uh, if you have an electronic cutter, well, you could set that thing up to cut a bazillion different um, circles. You know, I don't have one of those, so there you go. All right. So this little gizmo goes in. This is the blade. You do have to be careful. You don't want to put your finger right on there and push real hard, because if you do, you're going to poke a hole straight in your hand. That's not good. All right, so what I do, this is set to cut this size circle unless it's gotten out of whack. So we'll just come over here. So we'll see whether I have it set. You push down on this and rotate the bottom part of it. Okay. And Bob's your uncle. You get... A two and a half inch circle so then you know you'll learn how to read this this tool um, 
We'll see if I manage to do it because I haven't done this for a few days. You learn how to set it up, where, how to position it by looking, you know, what you have to look at. Oh, well done, Barb. So you can get, you know, you can be pretty efficient by using one of these. There's all different kinds of these little things, but this is the one that I have. When I get done with it, I use something to poke the blade back out of it. And then I put the blade, it has a little self-storing compartment for it. And I put it back in there. And the only reason I keep the packaging for this stuff is because of teaching classes. It's so much easier for me to be able to look it up online if I have something in the packaging. So that's the only reason. There would be no other reason to keep packaging if it weren't for that. So that is the Fisker Circle Cutter. It cuts cuts 90 pound paper very smoothly. It might do 140 as well. If you want to make this paper heavier, of course, you could glue these, you know, you could use the 90 pound paper, but you could just glue it, you know, glue multiple layers together if you want. I use single layers. Okay. I have this cool tissue paper. I don't know if Mary Atia is still here or not, but this is totally Mary Atia's fault. <laughs> this is totally Mary the, the Mary Atia's fault. She stream has a streaming channel and a YouTube channel here. Um, in fact, she streams tonight, I think, unless something has changed. And she does something else. That crazy Mary. She streams in the middle of the night, as far as I'm concerned. The only time I ever see the time of day that she streams is because I've stayed up all night to get there. <laughs> I mean, she'll start streaming at, I don't know, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Whew, the girl must never sleep. Anyway, she gets us all in trouble. No, oh, she's there. She's here. Mary Atia heard me talking about her. Flushed her right out. We go right up to the surface she comes. <laughs> Okay, so the thing about this paper, it's tissue paper, I saw her mention this on her stream or show at one time that she'd gotten it at um, Hobby Lobby. And I'm like, what? They have this kind of stuff at Hobby Lobby? I didn't know. For $1.99, you got quite a bit of it. It's not really what I would consider um, tissue paper, or it doesn't feel exactly like tissue paper, but it is a thin paper. And it has all this cool writing stuff, faded out writing kind of stuff on it. So, Mary, this is your fault. I bought two packages of it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. So, what I have is, um, this is a glue stick. This is a YooHoo glue stick. Um, I decided to try these because everybody raved about them and you can't get them here. You know how we all are. Part of the art supply collection is the thrill of the hunt. So you got to get yourself out there and you got to hunt for the stuff. If they, if you can't find you who glue sticks anymore, you got to hunt for them <laughs> or you got to order them. Well, they don't sell them anywhere where I live. I mean, nowhere that I live. I'm not sure they sell them in the state of Missouri anymore. I don't know. Anyway, I found them, found them in California, so I loaded up. So I've been playing with the Yoohoo glue stick. I don't know that I think it's a bit better than the, the uh, Elmer's Extreme, but maybe it is. I really don't know. Anyway, I digress. So back to this. Now, why am I using... Um, glue stick as opposed to glue is it, because it's paper and the paper is not very heavy and this will help um, minimize warping. So I put a uh, nice generous coat of glue stick on here on my little circle getting it all the way to the edges and then I just stick it down here on this paper. And you could do anything you want with these artist trading coins. I'm just showing you my process. And then I use a scraper of some kind. And then I burnish it. This scraper is overkill for these little circles. In case you didn't know. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, Blix has them. I mean, there's all kinds of places that have the Yoohoo glue sticks. But you know what? When I want it, I don't know if you guys are like this or not, but when I want it, I want it now. I don't want to have to order it and wait for it. That's why Amazon Prime is just entirely too handy. Yeah, don't we all know that? Okay, so as I said, nice, generous coat of glue stick. It would be even better if you, I think, if you put a nice, generous addition of glue stick on the tissue, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to mess my tissue up because it costs me $1.99 for all this tissue paper that they might quit making someday and then I'd run out and then, oh me, oh my, what would I do then? Ugh. The thought process of a creative person is nuts, people. It's nuts. Okay, then I turn it over on the other side and I burnish it from the other side. Okay, so it's really well adhered. All right. Then, sit down. And I do a whole, did a whole bunch of them. I did 20 at one time. So then I sat down. And I took these. I was watching baseball game. <laughs> Mary's going to make tissue paper coins now. There you go. You're welcome, Mary. Turnabout is fair play. All right. So then, I, I mean, telling you this, showing you this process seems kind of silly, but I don't know. Sometimes the silliest things are the most obvious things. I need someone to show me because it's like, well, I would have skipped steps one, two, and three, and I see now why it's not a good idea to skip that. Okay, so I trim these out. I just take time. I trim them out. You know, it, here's another thing. You could adhere the whole piece of, of watercolor paper down to that whole big piece of tissue, and you let it dry, and then you send it through your electronic cutter. That's perfectly fine, too. But again, I might waste something <laughs> that I might need in the future. I know. People, I have no excuse. It's the way I operate. Okay, so I've co it's covered on one side. And then I uh, repeat the process. And I do it on the other side. Because I want the same thing on both sides. So I... Another big, oh, thick coat of glue stick. The glue stick is a, the driest adhesive short of tape. Or, you know, Xyron or something like that. Which is going to be drier. It's the driest glue that I have come in contact with so far. And so that's what I use when I don't want the paper to buckle very much. So then I go through the same thing. I burnish it from this side, then I turn it over, I burnish it from the other side, and then I cut it out again. Because I can get more accurate cutting if I do it in two steps. Now, if you are particularly picky, which I wasn't on this, but if you're very picky, you see the writing on this go, it's directional. So if you want to put, make sure that it's going the same direction on both, then you want to kind of line it, you know, kind of line it up. Oh, let's just not go there. Okay. You know what I mean. Don't tell me, don't tell me that you guys don't do that or don't think about it yourselves because I will not believe you. <laughs> I will not believe you. Okay, so that is the prep work that I did on those. Okay, that's the prep work. Um, and then I just let those puppies get good and dry. Good and dry. So now they're good and dry. The next part of this process I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to do very many of them. I'm going to show you. I use white gesso. It doesn't make any difference what kind of white gesso. This is all just to have some kind of background thing going on. And I got white gesso on my dark jeans that are brand new. Now, I don't know, is Shannon Green still here? Speak up, Shannon, if you're still here. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, Patty Kelly says Joggles just came out with a stamp for the back of the ATCs, the coins. And I know that they have uh, the watercolor paper that's cut in the coin size too. So you can buy them. If you don't want to cut them, you can buy them on watercolor paper from Joggles as well. Um, so you can do that. Yeah, I don't have any luck getting Jessa to wash out of my jeans. Nope, Shannon's kind of here. Okay. Shannon, Amadex took the Gesso out of my jeans. Thank you very much for enlightening me about Amadex. That is your responsibility, and I thank you very much. Um, if you have not, if you don't know what Amadex is, go to Shannon Green's channel and search it. And she found out about it at um, the Creative Creativation, and she did a thing on it. I I got some of it, and I'm sold. Just saying, took it out of my jeans. So thank you very much. I mean that sincerely. Okay, back to this. So if you slop gesso, because acrylic paint and gesso, sometimes I just have a devil of a time getting it out. And I've tried all different kinds of products. I have a terrible time getting it out of my clothes, especially dark blue, blue jeans. Yeah, Amodex, A-M-O-D-E-X. Hold on and I'll show it to you. It is magic stuff, I do have to say, and it's all Shannon's um, discovery <laughs> that I found this, because I found it through her, Amadex Ink and Stain Remover. Now, I, my husband looked all over for this, because I sent him on a mission one day, this was a while back, and he found it at a um, lumber yard, like Home Depot, okay? So, that's, that's where I, where I found it. Or he found it for me. It comes in, this one came in a little teeny tiny bottle, but you only use just a matter of a few drops at a time. But there is the thing, Ammo Dex. You can order it online. It's a family owned company. Great stuff. Just saying, great stuff. Um, I know it does sound like a monster. One of the things that I found with this process is that sometimes my um, I'm not good at getting the glue stick. All the way to the edges so if I find an edge that comes loose I just smear a little glue stick on it smash it back down that's what I do okay so yeah there Shannon's put the information in the in the uh, chat so I'm going to read it to you. Um, you can Google it. You can order it from their website. It's owned by a mother and daughter. The grandfather owned a printing company, and he invented Amadex to remove printing ink from his clothes. So there you go. But it did take the gesso out of my jeans. I am very, very happy. Okay, so I just have a palette knife, and this is white gesso. You could use whatever you want. This is white gesso. You could use white acrylic paint, too. And I just put it on here, and I just... Um, scrape it on a little bit and this is why I got the gesso on my pants because I got it on my fingers and then it went on my pants and, yeah should never ever have good clothes in on myself when I'm in here but you know how it is you come in the studio or in your creative space and you just pick up something you're just gonna do one little thing and the next thing you know you're hung up for hours and you, and, and you had on good clothes to start with. Well, they're not good clothes by the time you're done, right? Mm-hmm. That's why everything I have is um, dedicated to creativity because it is gonna, it's going to be that way anyway, so I might as well start out that way. Okay, then I just let these sit and, you know, there's some texture, there's some of the stuff from below showing, you know, coming up, um, the printing, I just set those off to the side. I only do one side of those. You could do as many sides as you want, but there's some more ready to, to add some stuff to. Then, once they're done, I took them to, I laid them out on a big piece of paper, 
actually, I laid them out on, I'll show you. Do you remember this piece of paper I showed you earlier? I laid these coins on top of that, like this. And then I sprayed them just to put some color on them. And the colors, or the stuff that I used, if I were to do this again, I would spray them with less color. I like them with a little less intensity. You can always add more. You certainly can't take it back. Um, but these are SEI tumble dyes. It's fabric tumble dye, fabric dye that I put in these bottles and I dilute them way down. But I would dilute them even more or just not put as much. And I sprayed them and then I rolled over them with a paper towel roll the way Diane Reedley does just to soak up the excess. And then I just let them dry. So that's what happened here. Okay. So that is that. And I only did it on one side. Did not do it on the other side. I left the back side plain. All right. Now, in order to get the ink to show up, because I'm going to ink the edges, to get them to show up a little bit more, to give it a little more surface to, to ink, I use just a nail file. This is one of those um, for fake fingernails. I don't know where I got it because I've never had fake fingernails on in my life. I don't have fingernails, period, because I played the piano for so many years and had to have short fingernails and I got used to it and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I just, it's best if you do this one, this is stone dry, which these are. And this will just kind of roughen part of the edge of that and take off any, um, you know, jagged places too. And I've used this so much, that there's hardly any grit left on it. Anyway, so that's what I do to them. And then I take my ink pad and I tend to use archival ink for this stuff. You could use distress ink. You use any kind of inks you want. Does the tissue paper absorb or reject the dye? I'm going to give you the closest shot I got, Mary, and I'm going to let you be the judge. That's as close as I can get to it. But the thing about that dye is it's permanent once it is um, dry. So even if it's sitting on the top, so you can see the gesso, even if it's sitting on the top, it's going to be permanent when it dries. So I'm not entirely sure what the answer to that question is, really. How's that for dodging a question? <laughs> so you can still see some of the little raggy edges there, which will go away eventually. I tend to like the permanent ink pads, and so I tend to use the archival. I do like water-soluble products for some things, but when I don't know what I'm coming over the top of something with, I will tend to go for things that will dry permanently. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. I'm just so glad I have something I can show you close up now. <laughs> but I'm not going to brag anymore because the last time I bragged, the camera or the computer or something uh, put the kibosh on me and, and, and instructed me not to be like that. So I'm just going to say I'm grateful and we'll just move on down the road. Okay. So this is what it looks like before inking and this is what it looks like after inking. So to me, it's a, it's you know and you could ink later sometimes I ink a second or third time but that's what I like so before after okay well oh, thanks Shelly I love them I love them but I did learn today that I can't be too um I have to be I have to be nice and don't be don't be too full of myself <laughs> inanimate objects will take revenge if you do all right so I did that process to a lot of them we'll do a few more even though these aren't sanded we'll um, 
We'll do a couple more of these. Ink a couple more just so we have them. You got to be nice to your stuff. I'm telling you. It's kind of like art supplies have feelings too. Cameras have feelings too. Computers. You think computers don't get revenge? <laughs> Yes, everyone on the other side of the screen is now sitting there going, mm-hmm, she's totally lost it. Well, maybe. It's just been one of those crazy weeks, people. <laughs> I, had, I had visitors. I had a visitor that came to my door early this week that was most not welcome here. And a couple days later, my best friend, whom I hadn't seen in years, was at my front door. So it's been one of those weeks. It was great to have her here. Okay, so moving along back to the uh, coins. So here's our three little coins. That is really close. Let's back out a little bit. There we go. So what I have here in my hot little hand is I have taken one of the Mandala Madness decks and I have, um, I call it harvesting. I'm sure other people use that term. I think I've heard Shannon use that. <laughs> you don't think I've lost it? Mm. Well, that's right. Everything has some feelings, right, Debbie? So I took one of the Mandala Madness decks and I, because I could, and I heartily suggest that you consider doing the same thing because you just don't know how much fun you will have tearing these apart and using them. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I would do them. I will probably never have a deck of cards because I do tend to collect these along with a few other things. I probably will never buy just one deck of cards. If it's a deck of cards I like, I will probably always from here on out buy two because tearing them apart and using them is it's a wealth of artistic material. Um, and if you just sacrifice one card, if you have a deck and you just sacrifice one card and do it and see how much stuff you get out of it, I bet you'll be doing it more. Anyway, I digress. So I, what I do is I split the cards apart. It's super easy to do. I don't know if I split all these or if I saved a couple. Let me see. Now I saved two so I could show you. <clears throat> so I take the card. So this is a regular card. Just, and you don't even have to have fingernails or thumbnails because I don't have either. And, but if you just stick your nail, the just the edge, just a teeny little edge of your nail in there, you can get it started. And then they will peel just like this. Okay, you can do the same thing with corrugated cardboard. You can do it with um, with these kinds of coffee sleeves. Anything that's a layered kind of paper. And then you can just split them. Now one half of it's going to be thicker than the other half. You know, that's a given because it's not going to, it's a laminated kind of product. We're all a little crazy. That's right. We're all a little crazy. <laughs> Yes, yes, we are. See how easy you can do that? And then just peel them apart like that. And then you've got access to both sides. Not only have you thinned down the paper, you can do this with greeting cards too. Uh, not only have you thinned down the paper, which makes it easier to use, but you have also now given yourself access to everything on this side of the card as well as this side of the card yes now there are 48 cards in the set so if you split that up 48 times 2 is 96 as far as I know so split them all apart and then you can just start harvesting stuff out of them see like this and so I will sit down and I have I don't have a bunch of punches, but I do have some, and so I'll use punches, or sometimes I just get my scissors out and I just start cutting things. So here's an example of some of the circular things. 
This is from part of one deck of cards. Okay, part of one deck. Here's an example of using the scissors and cutting, cutting around it, cutting the shape. Okay. And at first when I started doing this, I was avoiding my name because my signature is on all the cards. And at first I was avoiding that, even though it's my name, I was leaving that out. But the thing about it is, um, who cares if my name's on it? Because I can always take something else and I can put on top of it. Or I can use that to put the word, you know, on top of it. Because if you'll notice, each of these that I've done, with the exception of this one, has a word or a phrase of some kind on them. So I sometimes just strategically put a word, or in the case of this one, my name is still on there, but you really, unless I point it out to you, I don't think so much that you see that. And up here it's got a little bit of my name, um, but again, if I don't point that out to you, I'm not sure that you really notice it that much. So sometimes I'll cut the shapes, you know, like cut the shapes out, like that one. And other times I just use punches. And I do have an assortment of circle punches, assortment of sizes, because I love circles and I think that you can never have too many circles in your life. So I have all these different sizes of circle punches. And if one of them breaks, I'm heartbroken. I have to go replace it. I don't have very many punches, but I do have lots of circle punches. And if you have the electronic cutters, of course, you can set that up to dot to cut anything you want. Okay, and then after I do all this harvesting stuff, or as much as I want, um, then I divide it all up in these little baggies. So these are my geometric shapes. These are punches as well. Uh, I had a square punch that I bought at a garage sale, so that's what that is. Um, this is from one of the corners of one of the cards, so it's got a rounded, because this is the rounded corner of the card, and then I just squared off the other side. Um, this is uh, the hexagon, and they had a bunch of these hexagon punches at Joann's not too long ago that they were selling for like half price. Half, they'd already marked them down, then they sold them for half price. Hang on just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, and so I bought a couple of different sizes of the hexagon. I think I ended up with three. I had one, and then I bought two more. So that's what I, um, that's what I got. So I put all of those, I just sort of sort them out into little baggies. So I have resources to pull from. Now this is one, these, I just love these, um, because I don't know why, but I love balloons. And so I just take this balloon punch and I just, you know, where, however it fits in the, um, in the card. Let's see if I can find one here. Okay. So for example, this is the card. Okay. It's been split down, right? And this, let's see if I have the piece that came from this. Yes. Okay, so I put that punch on there, and I could, figured out that I could punch up here and get a balloon, and I could punch this one, and I could get a balloon, and then I could fit a square. You can see how close I got to the edge. I got the square and one hexagon out of it, and there's still plenty of other things left. So I can still come in here and harvest out other, like little circles. There's plenty to get little circles out of there, you know. So, um, Chance has been in there long enough. So that is, you know, I'm not too picky about how those balloons come out. I, however they come out is how they come out. Then I found this other little balloon 
shape and this was also a punch now you can see this one has a notch out of it and it has a notch out of it because I got too close to something else well I'll just put that on the edge and these have um, this punch has a little basket that goes with it okay little tiny basket right well that's a nightmare to keep up with so um, I would recommend that if you don't keep up with it that you just cut your own little basket with scissors so there are you know those are all shaped punches you know everything I have fits in a plastic shoe box this is stuff that's left over yeah it is kind of like making inches yeah so this is stuff that's left over you know that I'll use for you know other things borders whatever I just you know cut it's a good TV thing so you can just sit down I have one punch that has a whole bunch of butterflies on one punch so you know it's butterfly confetti it's the only kind of confetti I can tolerate <laughs> so there's butterfly confetti and there's some that are little itsy tiny butterflies but you know so and I didn't even dump all of it out so this is like all the leftover who knows you know when I'll use that but I do. I do use it, right? We'll leave some of those out. Then I take, go through and I take the words. And I cut the words apart. Now you have the word. The inspiring word is on the front of the card. All right, where is my... Um, 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 um. Okay, so you have the inspiring word on the front of the card. You also have it in a different size on the back of the card. So you get two of each of the inspiring words if you tear the cards apart. Some of you will never do that. I understand. No judging. <laughs> and then I cut out the quotes. Sometimes I take the quotes and I cut the quotes apart because I only want some words out of the quote. So I'll cut those out. But I cut out a bunch of stuff. Again, I'm just harvesting stuff. And then I put all those together and put those in a separate bag so you know I don't do this all at one time I've done it over the course of a number of different sessions of messing around with them so the point is I have all my stuff right I got all my stuff and now you just start playing what do you want to use where right it's harvest stuff it's the harvest time of year you know what I mean it's the harvest time of year so let's say that we might want to just, you know, because I've got butterflies out here, I'll arrange a few butterflies, let's say. I'll, no, I'm going to show you my, uh, well, that's an idea, but I'm going to show you my very favorite one I've done so far. My very favorite one I have done so far. We'll do it beginning to end. How about that? Okay. All right, now, this is the part of me that gets a little crazy. I, If I can see those words, I want the words to be, the letters to be right side up. I know, I know, don't, no judging allowed, people, no judging allowed. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take some circles, some little circles. I'm going to look for another one. Maybe, no, I don't want to use a heart. That's for something else. That'll be for something else. I don't know what, but, you know. So I'm looking for the one that, you know, is calling my name. Maybe this one. So I'm going to put an odd number of little circles on here. Okay. Try and keep my butterfly stuff separate from my circle stuff. Because, you know, you know, can't, you got to have your stuff. No fighting allowed on the stuff. Maybe we'll put one more butterfly on this other one see what we got will you work on there yeah okay so we'll we'll mess around with these two okay you'd have to do the same thing with the world sh word Cheryl I'm glad I'm not the only one I'm telling you I'm glad I'm not the only one all right now before I get too um, crazed here which has been known to happen um, 
I'm going to look at my little circles and see if I've gone around them with ink or if they need to be gone around with ink. Those look like I've done, I think, all of those. Maybe this one hasn't been done. Oh, no, it has. Okay, those have all been inked. But the butterflies here have not been inked. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the um, archival ink just to kind of give a little bit of dimension to these butterflies just a little bit you know it just it makes a difference to me hi janet hello uh, and everybody i know i didn't uh, call everybody by name today when i started but i'm so glad you're here thank you for coming and hanging out on drama free friday where we just let the world go by because it's crazy and we all know it and sometimes you just got to take a break from it so we just let it all go by we don't bring it in here we don't talk about it we all know it exists we all have varying opinions about the world and that's that <laughs> enough said right enough said moving on okay so i've i've inked those i have now used some tacky glue and um because i find it easier to work with so i'm just gonna I'm going to try not to obsess about this, and I'm just going to stick these down, okay? So I will use a little bit of tacky glue, minus the glue booger. And I'm just going to put these on here. I'm not going to obsess about where they land. Yep, got to let the crazy world just go do its thing. It's not, I can't do anything during this period of time that I choose to be creative and to have fun with you guys. So I just let it go do its thing. And so that's what we do. We just enjoy. There are some, there are plenty of places that enjoy the the drama and the the discussions and so forth and so on this is not one of them so this is not what goes on here so we'll just let my head be in the sand <laughs> for an hour two hours Now, it will take a minute for the um, glue, tacky glue, and I'm not putting very much on there, but it will take a fat minute for that to set up. And you can overlap them a little bit if you want. But it will take a minute for that to set up. So you're going to have to, or at least I, what I found was I needed to give that a little bit of pressure, you know, to pat them in place until I knew that the edges indeed were stuck down okay so it's just a little cluster of circles all right let's put let's see are we right side up or upside down we do not want the butterflies flying upside down okay there we go all right let's put some glue on this and we're just going to stick these down i'm telling you the less you think about this and i can get so obsessive over things like this i'm going to let some stick off the page or off the edge just just get over yourself, Barb. Just get over yourself. Don't worry about it. Just stick it down. Okay, get over yourself, people. I was not. I was not, Christine, but that's really nice of you. You must think I'm much um you must think I'm must much older than I am. No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing you. Don't don't be offended by what I just said. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> but you know what? I would have been if I'd been asked. But I probably would have been. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would have been. I was a young mother at that time. I probably couldn't have gotten away to go there. I would have. I would have tried though. I would have definitely tried. Christine, I'm teasing you. Don't be offended by what I just said, okay? <laughs> Please. I don't mean to offend anyone. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this over. Don't look. The butterfly doesn't mind. And I just trim off the, the bits and pieces. So I'm okay with that. Barb is a tease. Barb's terrible. 
I know some weeks make you that way all right now over here where I kind of whack that off I'm just gonna put a little more ink on it same thing here okay just like that so we've got these two little little things happening now it's best if you let these dry before you start going in and and um, embellishing them but you know I can't stand that so we're gonna march ahead and if something terrible happens we'll fix it later all right I like to embellish them with uh, the jelly roll pins or paint pins those are fine too but this is the um, again I keep the packaging only because it's easier for me to explain to people what things are if wishes were fishes all this stuff would be just chucked in a box but this way you see I can show you exactly what it looks like jelly roll moonlight 06 these will show on dark paper most of the time and so this is one of those I love the moonlight pens moonlight See, I just read it, and then I had to read it again, because it's like, really? What was that? Moonlight. Hi, Miss Joycey. Okay, so I have a piece of scratch paper. We call Able to Rejoice, Joycey or Noodle. So if you hear me talking to Noodle, that's who I'm talking to. All right, let me have another little swill of coffee here. I guess I could talk to you, couldn't I? So you could see the craziness in person, in action. I was in the cradle when I got married. Claus man probably wouldn't agree with that. But. All right, let's, you know what? Let's zoom in because we can, because we love our camera. Okay. All right. Isn't that cool that I can do that, that you can see it? Look, it's way bigger than my head. <laughs> okay. I digress. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn these into little balloons. All right. So, here's how you do it. And they're circles. They don't look like balloons, but we're going to make them balloons, whether they want to be balloons or not. And we're going to put a little, the little thing that where the balloon has a, you know, gets knotted up. Yeah. All right. Now, this is going to take a minute for that gel ink to dry, and this would have been better if it had gone straight down, but, you know, it didn't, so. If that's going to wreck your day, then you have to make a new one. All right, so this one's going to come from here. It would come there, like that. And this one... But don't those little circles make the cutest darn balloons you ever saw? I mean, really, aren't they cute? <laughs> okay, let's pick another color. And I put it back in the package again so that when I show people what I'm using, it's easy for me to do. So when somebody says, what's the what's the such and such, I can usually tell you. All right. Um, and then if I want to, I'll, I'll put my fingers in a couple of spots to try and stay out of the ink. And then if I want to, I'll put a little border. And this is just a little haphazard. Kind of border. Like this. So it just gives it a little bit of a frame and then you can come in, you know, and do any number of things that you want to with that, you know. Sometimes I put little dots. If I've broken the line, I'll put little dots at the ends of the breaks in the line just because it's kind of fun to do that. This is where you get your doodle on. And everybody's style of doing things is going to be different. And that is a 
It just makes it, it just gives it a little something, something. Don't you think those are cute? Don't you think they're cute? Isn't that a cute little balloon thing? Okay, let's um, take a look at the butterflies. And we'll add some words to it here in a minute. Okay, butterflies. Flutter buys. Uh, one of the fun pins to use when you're doing this, I'm not going to do it on this one because it takes even longer for this this jelly roll pin. This is the, uh, let's see, Moon Glow, is that right? Let's see. Obviously, I didn't keep the packaging for this. This is Jelly Roll Gold. Jelly Roll Gold. See that? Look how good you can, look how well you can see that. Jelly Roll Gold. I love you, camera. You're nice. Anyway, these turn really, uh, even though there's a color that they turn really, they, they do mostly gold and which is nice but the biggest the bigger thing about this is this this gel ink is a little goopy and it takes longer to dry so we're not going to use that but i just wanted to show it to you all right let's see what color what i want to use maybe we'll use let's see about these these uniball it's Uniball, uh, well, that's really close. Uni Super Ink, Vibrant Waterproof Ink. Okay, these are super fine pointed. So let's get one of these out. Let's get the dark blue one out. Yeah, I know some people have had, um, are not sure about the waterproof aspect of these. I haven't done a lot of testing with them, so I couldn't tell you, but I do love the tiny, fine little point that these pins have. Now this again would be far better if I let that glue completely dry but I didn't so. So I'm just coming right beside the butterfly and I'm going to try to do this without letting the pin slip which I'm famous for. But what it will do is it will allow that butterfly that's now outlined and it needs a little glue up there but we'll fix that later it allows that butterfly to kind of pop off the page a little bit more it's the same name gold shadow yeah gold shadow thanks nancy i've been terrible about watching the chat today i hope we haven't had any problems if we did claus man's in the house so he's got eyes in the back of his head he should be able to deal with things i just was busy showing stuff today you know what i mean who is it that says you know what i mean jelly bean somebody on youtube says that who says that what paper are the butterflies made from i'm so glad you asked <laughs> i'm teasing um they're all punched out from the Mandela Madness cards that I've split apart. In fact, you can you can rewind the video. You can drag the slider back. Even if when it's live, you can drag the slider back and you can see me talking about that. Or you can wait till the recording comes up and you can see it. But I split the, the short version. The Cliff Notes version, for any of you that remember Cliff Notes, is that you split the cards apart and then punch out of the... Um, I used shaped punches to just punch those butterflies out. Did you guys know that you can re rewind while it's live? I do that a lot. If I get into somebody's stream or, yeah, their stream, and I don't, I got in in the middle of something, so I'll just drag that slider back to the left. And you can do it on your phone or iPad. Or I think you can do it on other kinds of tablets and phones, Androids and the like, and, or your computer. That's a really nice feature. So you can go back in real time. But see how much better those, those butterflies look when they're outlined? I know. I know. Okay, so let's use... So if you want a really fine point pen... It's the Uniball Signo DX. I found them at this set of pens I found at 
Office Depot, but I think Walmart has them as well. And there's other sets that I think have, um, sorry, I'm zoomed in really tight, that have metallic ink as well. But the, the nice part for me about those is the fine, fine point. Alrighty, so let's, um, let me pick another color here. I'm going to get something that has a broader tip on it. We'll just use, I want something that will show up. So I'm going to use this dark green. And then I'm just going to add a little border, a little scalloped border around the edge, just because, oh, and my scallops, I look like I've been drinking. I'm telling you that caffeine is something today. Americano, whoo, had an effect on my scalloping ability. Okay, so I've just added a little scallop border around that. Probably add a little bit more here. Okay. And then when I want to add something else to that, you know, I just, I don't pre-plan this stuff. I just play with it. Okay, so I might come back in and add another, like a double scallop. And then I sometimes with the scallop, I'll turn it into lace by adding dots around the scallops, which is fun to do. We'll probably just let that go for the moment. It's good enough. You get the idea. Bye, Dawn. Good to see you. Okay, so you can play with that. You can add all kinds of stuff to it. I mean, white dots or black dots inside those little things. We'll do, actually, we'll just add a black dot. What do you say? Um, yeah, we'll just add a black dot just to give it a little more um, punch on that outside. So this is a Posca, and this is the extra fine point Posca. And the cool part about these is you can just touch. You can do this with any of the Posca pins. Oh, you guys, I was telling you about that art store I went to. I told you about that art store I went to. I digress. Okay, hang on a minute. Oh, I just got a message from Shelly. So is Joanne Hodges in the in the chat? Crafty Hodges, are you here? If you are, let me know. I miss seeing you. I'm glad you're here. We're playing with your with your concept of artist trading coins if you're here. Um, okay, what am I looking for? Photos. I want to show you this if I can find it. <laughs> If I can find it. Okay. We're talking Posca pins. I'm talking Posca pins. Okay, here it is. All right. Now. Whoops. Hold on. See, you gotta be you gotta be smarter than the average bear to be able to do this. Okay. That's too dark. Okay, let's see if we can see this. Let's see if we can see this. You know what I mean, Vern? Yeah, did somebody tell put it in there what the thing about know what I mean, jelly bean? Was that Janet? Um I think it is Janet that streams. Monkey Island Madness. Okay, look at this, people. If you like Poscas, okay, I stood there. I stood there and looked at this display going, I want one of those and one of those and two of those and 20 of those. <laughs> I didn't buy very many, but I did buy whites and blacks because that's what I use the most. 
I did buy whites and blacks in several of those pinpoints. But it goes clear up to the top. The top is a different size. Here. The top row is a different size than this one, than this one. They're all different sizes. These are the Mamba Jamba ones down here. I'm telling you. Yeah. Look at that. That's, that's Posca Pin Deliciousness right there, people. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll show, you some, I'll show you a couple more. Hang on a minute. Pardon me while I find it. Okay. All right. Now, I'm not into watercolors. That, that yet. Let me say yet, because you never know when it could happen. I was, at the, I was at the end of the row. I didn't, could not get it all in one shot. That is Daniel Smith. Mm-hmm. That is Daniel Smith. Even I had to swoon over that. Okay, and one more, and then I'll uh, I'll quit torturing you with pictures if I can find it. There's one more. I don't think I can. I don't see it here. Okay, I'll just have to. I'll have to find it and put it on. I'll have to find it and put it on Instagram. She says like she knows what she's doing. <laughs> she she doesn't. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. She doesn't. Okay, so back to these. These should be dry by now. Um. Okay. So. Uh, oh, this is what I was doing. So the thing is, uh, with Posca, with the teeny little one, you can just touch it. And you can do this with any size. You can just touch it, and it will make little tiny dots. And this is paint, and so it will dry and be permanent. But you put it all the way around like this, and it just adds, it just you know, it just adds that little something, something. And this little white thing you see up here, that's just where the paper has come away. And so once it's fully dry, I'll add a little more glue stick up there. Daniel Smith is um, a watercolor paint company. And they make outstanding watercolor paint. Yeah. Uh, so Mary likes the fine liners better than Posca's. Hey, you know, the cool part about art supplies and creativity is that there is enough room for all of us. Right, Mary? <sighs> Absolutely. I love that. Okay, so once there, you know, I have them to this point, then I get my words out. And if I could find them. Okay, so I have a variety of these chat um sticker things from Tim Holtz and I'm sure there are other people that have other things because I've seen some of them but I can't tell you who they are right now because I can't remember them but by using these then I don't have to think stuff up I just go through and see what you know strikes my fancy so we're just going to take this one because you'll be able to see it and oh thanks Josie and so I'm going to take these and I literally, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I go through and I go, okay, what do I see? What do I see? What do I see? And what do I like? Um, and I'll pull something out and it, and my best thing is to always take the first thing I see. Okay. Take the first thing I see. Okay. I like this one that says believe in daydreams. So we're going to use this. And it's clearly too big to put in one spot. And so I will cut the pieces apart and then try to not drop them. And then sometimes I will sort of temporarily place them. And if I go, yeah, I can like that, then I personally use glue to put these down. And they may or may not go back in the same exact place, but, you know. 
I don't trust the adhesive on the back of these, especially when they're going over mixed media kinds of backgrounds. Okay, you're irritating me, so we're going to stick you right down, okay? Thank you. I like that better. All right, then if you have fingernails, it's much easier to do this. And there are other people who use tweezers and work really well with tweezers. I've said before, and I'll say it again, I am tweezer challenged. And that makes no sense to those of you who like tweezers and use them a lot. Um, but I can spend more time screwing around with a pair of tweezers trying to figure out how to get something to work than I can just fumbling through it with my big old fingers. All right. Then when I get done with that part of it, Then once this is fully dry, and I kind of like to have things, you know, overlapping other things. So this is going to overlap the, the border here a little bit. And if it's a little wonky and things aren't completely straight, oh well, they might have been one time if I'd been more careful, but I wasn't, so they aren't. Okay. And again, you have to kind of pat the edges, you know, back down until the glue really sets up. But once this is fully dry, then I may come back with one of those pens and outline around the words. Then again, I might not. You know, who knows? Okay, let's see what we're going to put on this one. Um, okay. And if I cover up something that I've already, you know, spent time creating, you know, so be it. That is okay with me. And in this case, all I want is the ampersand. So I'm going to grab the ampersand out of this and then I'll save the words for something in the future. And oftentimes when I'm putting stuff like this down on some little thing like this, and I know that, um, well, let me back up. I had two thoughts that went across my head at the same time. And that is always disastrous. Um, I know that Joanne Hodges talks about building her little collages in a square format and then cutting it down to the circle and doing, you know, then gluing the circle collage onto the coin base which I think is a wonderful idea. I just don't think I would be successful at it. Um, because I'm using little tiny bits and pieces of things. But if you're working with bigger pieces, you know, like faces and stuff that she does on hers or whatever your style is, uh, for me, it's a lot about the words. And um, so that this is just how I do it. You know, different people do it different ways, which that's what I like. Okay, so there's our two little coins that we did today. Okay? Spell check sucks. Let's just be clear. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. All right. I call it auto incorrect. Now, you can take these uh, little coins you can do whatever you can sign the back you can do whatever i mean you can add a ton more stuff like for example uh, you could shadow around them and i did on some of the ones i did earlier i shadowed around it with Payne's gray ink tense pencil and a water brush to pop the the image up off the 
the um, surface a little bit. You can add little details to your butterflies. You know, just little pretend things. My hands are very sticky at this point. You know, and I don't really care how, how perfect they are. It's just a suggestion of something, right? So you can just play with them till your heart is content. Um, how How is it about the words if the words are whatever you see in the moment? Serendipity, curious. At, if you're asking me how I choose the words, it is just whatever shows up in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, it is just whatever shows up in the moment. If that's what you're asking me. If that wasn't what you asked, ask me again. I'll try to answer better. <laughs> so this is a great display. This was also something that I saw Joanne do on Crafty Hodges. And that was to use a, a pocket letter or the these are baseball sleeves that we uh, people use for pocket letters. In fact, I know I have some somewhere. I couldn't find them, so I had to take a pocket letter apart to use the the uh, sleeves and in order to get the coins to show up what I did was I put a, a two and a half by three and a half inch piece of black cardstock in there and it was slipping around so I stuck it down using a piece of score tape which is real ugly on this side but you know I'm showing it to you this way so it doesn't matter And so this was something that she also did. She showed using them, you know, as an ornament, which I, I do this a lot for a lot of things. So that was a good idea. So I did that to a couple of them. And um, I'm just going to stick them in here. But by sticking the black background down, then that the black isn't wanting to scooch around on me. And these pockets were a little, um, they were a little fat because of the stuff that had been in this pocket letter so they were really wanting to move around okay so we'll just stick this in here now if I wanted to get really um, meticulous about this I could stick the coins down to the background but I'm not going to I'm just going to leave them like that so let's take a look at the whole thing So you can see it all in one go. Now it might be more effective without the strings, but I just wanted to show you what, that the strings, you know, you could use them as ornaments. They would also make, if they're flat, they'd make good bookmarks because you could let the string hang out of the top of the book and then your coin could, um, could make your bookmark, you know, actually be the bookmark. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to, now that you've seen how this particular set of nine looks far away, I'm going to show them to you close up so you can get some ideas. All right, so here we go. And this way you can see what I've done on each one of them. So this is that two part balloon um, that I had, that punch. And you can see I got a little sloppy. You can see it really close up on this camera. I got a little sloppy with the gold as I went around the words, but oh well. I was even kind of sloppy with the birds that I drew in. But from a distance you don't see it, so who cares. This had this was just black, and so I used a white Posca pen, and I put little polka dots and little polka dots there. So that's what I did on that one. So this was a punch. This was a punch, and this center section was a different uh, tiny punch. So that was added on top of the bigger punch. Okay. This one, and see the words on this one, it says, I keep joy. The reason, I mean, those were words that I stuck together. Nobody, you know, nobody would in their right mind would do that. Um, 
But I did that because it's like that is one of the things that is a mantra in my head. And that is that I keep joy in my heart. I keep joy. So there it is. So this was one of the images from one of the, the instruction sides of the card. And so I just fussy cut it out. This was a big circle. Here's the rest of it down here on this one. So I put part of it on this one and I put the other part of it on this. So that's one and that's another one. All right, this one is uh, fussy cut out of one of those mandalas. So that shape came from the mandala image itself. The, the center was one of these tiny little circles that I just, you know, cut, punched out from something that there was enough room to punch something. Okay. And then I just put the word rest in there because I need to do more of that. So this is something that's kind of reminding me, you know, not so much about trading these with others, but kind of reminding me messages to myself. This was two separate Actually, this was three. This was one, this was another one, and that was a third one. Piece, bits and pieces from the cards. So this, each of these, the back one and the front one, were from the, the instruction side of the cards that I fussy cut out, and that's a punch of leftover paper. So there's one of our little balloon images. I love those, made out of circles. They look like balloons to me. Here's the one that we did just now. So this is Wander and Discover. This one is Beautiful Day. Dream to the Moon and Back. So I took um, I took one of the sayings that was, I love you to the moon and back, and I put dream to the moon and back. So I combine the words the way I want them, you know, just because they're a certain way on the presented on the um, the sticker sheet on these doesn't mean you have to use them that way, right? I give you permission to do what you want. And this one, Believe in Daydreams. So that's the one we did too. And so there you go. There are some artist trading coins. My rendition. My rendition. So do you guys have any questions about anything? Yeah, sign and date. So they need to be signed and dated. All these need to be signed on the back side. And that is something I always do. I do sign and date my work. And I'm always on everybody else about doing that too. All right, in this colossal mess, I'm just looking to see if there's anything I missed showing you. I think I got it all. And that's just my process. You guys can do it any way you want. You know what I mean? Uh, so, again, the VIP class is tomorrow. Your email will go out later. Whoops, I just dropped one of my... I just dropped a coin right out of my envelope. These pockets are just a little stretched out, so I have to be a little careful with them. Okay, we'll put those over there. I'm setting up for the sponsors, in case you couldn't tell. Yeah, Eva Positivity Coins. That's right. So, as I said, VIP class is tomorrow at 2 p.m. You'll get your information in your email. All right. The sponsors have a new tripod for their camera. Yes, yes, they do. Let's see if they'll look at the camera. It's a different color. It's a different size. So we don't know whether they will accept the new conditions. <laughs> Same time next month. First Friday of the month. All right, let me get sponsors. Hello. Hello. Was it terrible in there today? Oh, it was terrible in there, wasn't it? I know. Life is terrible, terribly hard when you're a cat. I know, it's terribly hard when you're a cat. What do you got on your head? What's on your head? Something. All right, so he's got a little different, a little different shot here. Let's, 
There we go. There he is. There's Chance and all of his handsomeness. Charlie must be sunning himself in the... He must be sunning himself in the window still. But this is Chance. Good to see you too, APG. Good to see you too. So here is a sponsor number one. Big old fat Siamese cat. That's probably what got me in trouble when I said that earlier. That's probably what happened is I was made some crack about fat Siamese cats. And that's he probably put the spell on me from the other room. Did you do that when the computer wouldn't behave a minute ago? Did you do that? Probably so. Charlie, are you coming out? Come here. Come here. Come here. Are you coming up? Or are you just going to talk about it? Are you just going to talk about it? It was terrible today. It was just awful. It was just awful in there. Oh, it was terrible. Life is rough. Life is rough when you have to sponsor a show. When you have to sponsor Drama Free Friday, life is terribly hard. Yes, terribly hard. <laughs> Charlie's, see, it's exhausting, I'm telling you. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here. We're going to um, take off. And uh, I will, I am going to try and do some in, in between streaming, you know, just fun things. I don't know. Oh, don't start. Don't start that. You'll have to get down if you're going to cough. You can't do that up here. No, nobody wants to see you do that. Nobody wants to see you do that. <sighs> I'm telling you. You get to hog the whole spot and the whole spotlight. There you go. Okay. So anyway, I am going to do some streaming just for fun. Um, but, you know, click the, click the bell and sign up for our notification list and so forth so hopefully you'll find out because i don't know when it'll happen anyway that's it that's all for me remember to get creative today because you know it's easy right right and we'll see you next time bye everybody